Hello everybody, it's been a little while since I've had the opportunity to sit down and do a proper review of anything, especially a full-length single-player campaign like Mafia, so I apologize I didn't have this video out sooner. Having to constantly divide my time between university classes, work, and YouTube is ever a delicate balancing act. But nevertheless, here we are. And today, as the video implies, we are talking about Mafia Definitive Edition. Mafia Definitive Edition was developed by Hangar 13, the studio behind the highly divisive and only moderately successful Mafia 3. Released almost four years ago exactly. Given the backlash from that game, it goes without saying that the stakes were much higher for this game in a sense, as the success or failure of this game would likely largely determine the future of the Mafia franchise, one way or the other. When it was revealed that this 2020 remake of the original 2002 game would instead be more of a reimagining rather than a direct remake, and subsequently the game's delay to fall 2020 from its initial early summer window, that didn't exactly help. But after all this consternation and drama, here we are, and finally we get to determine whether the game is just bloody good fun or alternatively a bloody dumpster fire. When it comes to 2K games, any of their games, it could be one or the other. But at the very least, it's always memorable. So let's start with the story, since that is really the first item of consideration with any true Mafia game. I'm not going to get into spoiler specifics, aside from just a refresher of the basic premise, for those needing some explanation. So if you're looking to play through the game yourself, I won't spoil much. You take on the role of Tommy Angelo, a cab driver that gets in deep with the mob after he unintentionally becomes a getaway driver at gunpoint for two low-level Mafia thugs. He shakes off the car chasing them and drops off the mobsters at their base of operation. One of the mobsters pays him off and assures him that if he ever needed a favor, their boss would be more than happy to oblige. After a run-in with a rival gang, Tommy joins up with the Mafia looking to take revenge on the other mob, and in doing so, finds himself hurled headfirst into the world of organized crime. The game was marketed more or less as any other Mafia game in the past, a classic throwback mob simulator game with a compelling story about a up-and-coming mobster who never initially planned to be a mobster, with the whole rise to glory and subsequent fall from grace, before reaching this bittersweet conclusion. If you're familiar at all with past Mafia games, or have ever seen something like The Godfather or The Sopranos at any point in your life, you'll know by now this is effectively the bread and butter of any true Mafia story, and in that regard it mostly delivers, at, at least to a point. The story here, and maybe this is a problem with the original game, or of which this remake or reimagining, whatever you want to call it, is based off of, is that the story seems to be somewhat lacking a central focus. Its narrative kind of wanders around from point to point in the most indirect ways possible. Sometimes bigger and more complicated isn't always the way to go, if you don't know how to fully deliver. Some characters get way too much development, some get not nearly enough, and there aren't a lot of clear overarching themes. The Mafia genre, from a storytelling perspective, tends to rely a lot on repetitive themes, like the sins of the father, or blood vendettas, loyalty, honor, family, etc. The Mafia Definitive Edition definitely pays lip service to those ideas, but never manages to really replicate them or do anything with them in any meaningful capacity. The game does take a stab at the idea of loyalty and family, but compared to what we've seen in the past, specifically with Vito's storyline in Mafia 2, where all that and more was developed in far more intricate detail, this newest installment seems to fall short. As a consequence of going big and bombastic with the explosions, the gang warfare in the streets, and the extravagant set pieces, Mafia Definitive Edition does away with a lot of the quieter, more traditional Mafia storytelling that those of us familiar with the genre both in the game series as well as in other novel, film, and TV Mafia stories have come to expect. There are probably other people that honestly prefer this more Michael Bay style approach. And if you're playing this game and you take that view, I'm not trying to tell you that you're wrong for liking it. It just isn't for me is all I'm saying. One aspect from older Mafia games that longtime fans and really anyone who sold on the game based on the pre-release promotional footage will likely be disappointed by is the lack of a truly integrated open world environment. You could play Mafia 2 and completely ignore the story for minutes or hours on end if you wanted to. There were side missions and open world activities to participate in, and the world itself was quite a decent bit of fun to mess about in. I remember quite a few times I'd just take a break from doing story stuff and just go around breaking into people's cars, stealing them, and going on mile-long chases with a squad of police cars before shaking them loose, and selling the car to the scrapyard or one of the friendly local garages for a bit of quick money. 
which then I could use on buying some cosmetics for my character or my car. Nothing fancy, but it was a fun way to spend some time. There is really none of that here in Mafia Definitive Edition. The game is, I don't really want to say on rails, per se, but very scripted. Sometimes almost to the point where it literally feels on rails at times. Almost like you're watching the game rather than playing the game. For those who don't like the, what we could call the Kojima style of storytelling, it's definitely present in mass here. Now the game, sometimes during certain chase sequences, doesn't always make it clear what exactly it wants you to do. During one chase sequence where I was riding a motorcycle, trying desperately to catch up to an escaping car full of enemy mobsters, including a boss I was trying to eliminate, the game told me to catch up with the mobsters. After about 10 minutes of swerving, slowing down, speeding up, and dodging incoming and outgoing traffic, I finally caught right up alongside the blighter, riding alongside the car. Then a guy leaned out the window and gunned me down with a Tommy gun. I was forced to restart from the last checkpoint at the very beginning of the chase. Fast forward a few attempts and I finally figured out that the game never wanted me to catch up with the car at all, but rather maintain a safe distance and just keep the car in sight, as it leads me across town towards the dockyard where we'd have our real encounter. But the game never told me that's what I was supposed to be doing. It would have saved a lot of time and frustration if the game just rephrased the objective slightly to clarify what I was supposed to be doing. I'm more than content to die due to my own inadequacy and incompetence, but I don't like the idea of dying because I did exactly what the stated on-screen objective told me to do. I should probably note that there technically is an open world mode in the game, but it is completely inaccessible from the main campaign. There is a free roam mode where you can just run and drive around, but there's almost nothing really to do inside of it, aside from interacting with the fairly dull world, and if you want to spend some time looking about, find a handful of unlockable hidden cars, which when found are added to your garage in the main single player campaign, allowing you to choose them whenever the game allows you to drive a car. The cutscene quality in this game is pretty good. Not fantastic, but pretty good. I think this is due in part to a change in art style more than anything else. The third Mafia game, Hangar 13's first and previous installment in the series, went for an almost photorealistic approach. Whereas Mafia Definitive Edition feels somewhat, I want to say, smoother, there isn't quite as much close-up detail, but given the fairly good technical optimization we got in return, I'll take it. Well, at times, a fairly good. There are still some issues, but at this point, when it comes to Hangar 13, I almost expect that. The motion capture during cutscenes is spot on, although during in-game rendered scripted moments, the lip sync has a tendency to be somewhat inconsistent. Sometimes it looks normal, and other times the characters on screen look like puppets imitating human speech. The voice acting is quite good for the overwhelming majority of characters, with one very notable exception, the main protagonist. The voice actor for Tommy just sounds painfully monotone and unemotive. Ironic, I know, since I myself tend to have a fairly monotone voice, but hey, 2K didn't ask me to voice the lead character in a Mafia game, something all of you should be very, very, very grateful for. But when you're spending about 10 to 12 hours of your life at playing as this one character, you would hope, I would think, that they would at least sound like they somewhat give a damn about what they're doing and where they are at any particular moment. I feel like Tommy is almost the polar opposite of Lincoln Clay, or whatever his name was from the third Mafia game. With Lincoln, I got the impression that the voice actor was quite good, but the dialogue and character development gave him absolutely nothing to work with, to the point that beyond the very linear first few levels of the game that set up his initial revenge story arc, once you got to the more open world campaign levels, he felt like an empty shell you were embodying. With Tommy, the writing is all there, but the voice acting is definitely not, at least not for the most part. The mission design provides a respectable amount of variety in terms of mission types and set pieces. Although I will note that car chases are among the more common recurring themes, as I previously discussed. Also, there is the occasional, even less interesting, go talk to X person, take the item they give you, and drive to the specific spot on the map where you have to drop off or use said item. Quest archetype. It's kind of the opposite of a fetch quest, a deliver quest, I suppose. There isn't really a go-to term for it, as far as I know, but you know what I'm talking about. In hindsight, it kind of gives me forcible flashbacks to the old LEGO Island game on Windows 95, where you had to deliver pizzas to seemingly all 20 of the island's inhabitants. I can't even believe I'm thinking about LEGO Island, to be honest. It makes me fervently glad that to reflect on how far gaming as an entertainment medium has come that future generations will never have to play the loads of comparatively awful or even just laughable games we had as kids growing up in the 90s. Passive civilian NPCs both in the linear missions and in the more open-ended driving sections are very rudimentary. They have highly scripted pathing to the point that you can observe the 
loop if you hang in the same area for as little as 12 to 15 seconds. It's definitely a minor detail, but it's minor details like that that separate what we would think of as an amazingly intricate world, like that in games such as Red Dead Redemption 2, and somewhat lesser detailed, more generic worlds like that scene here. When you're in a period piece setting, kind of like in a fantasy setting, you want to be able to just walk, drive, or just otherwise commute around the area and feel totally immersed in it. Almost to the point where you begin to forget you're playing a game, you're embodying a character, and instead to some degree feel like you are the character. You want to have that sense of respectful wonder. Likewise, many of the building exteriors and the landscape at large feel somewhat forgettable. The city doesn't feel like it has any sense of identity. If you take a look at really any screenshot of a random city street location, and likewise took screenshots of cities from half a dozen other AAA open world games, I honestly don't know if I'd be able to pick out Mafia Definitive Edition from the bunch. Now the options menu for the game is surprisingly good, and even includes a little icing on the cake, so to speak. When you start up the game for the first time and try to start a new game, the game will have you select your difficulty, then the game will present you with a preliminary mini option screen where you can tinker with a few gameplay modifiers such as adjusting the amount of aim assist you want, wherever you want vehicle control to be automatic or manual, a scaling option allowing you to adjust the aggressiveness of police officers in game, specifically regarding what crimes civilians are likely to report you for, what crimes will cause a nearby police officer to chase you down, and how committed a pursuing officer will be to catching you, if at all possible. If you turn it up high enough, police pursuits can be initiated over something as little as blowing a red light, or cutting someone off in traffic. I don't know why you would want what would effectively be a realism simulator, but that option is possible, and I'm almost always on the side of giving players as many options as possible, letting them decide how best to utilize them. Another useful option I like, but likewise have never used, is the option to skip non-essential driving sequences. I'm not sure why you'd want to do this unless you're looking to speedrun the game, but it's there if you want to use it. Each option has simple descriptions, so if you're not sure what does what, the game will at least try to explain things for you. Car Radio has a decent but fairly unremarkable lineup of song tracks. A far cry from the incredibly memorable and arguably iconic soundtrack featured in Mafia 2 or to a lesser degree, the third one, of which I would rather not name, kind of like Voldemort. However, one useful function the car radio does have is acting as a narrative device to bombard a fair amount of what would otherwise be tedious exposition if featured in a cutscene. Also in true Mafia game fashion, the radio at times will follow up with news reports, reacting to whatever new violent escapade you and your NPC buddies were on just minutes before. The shooting mechanics in this game are, well, kind of bizarrely inaccurate and unreliable. At times when you're in combat, it feels like your sidearm is about as unreliable at medium range as a 67 caliber flintlock. Also, all the sidearms in the game feel almost exactly the same. The actual models and sound design for the guns firing and reloading are all quite good, making them appear distinct. But when you fire into people, even at point blank range, they'll take at least two bolts and sometimes as many as four to go down, even if your first shot hits them in the head. The bullet sponginess of enemies can at times be quite silly. Your average goon, who isn't wearing bulletproof armor, shouldn't be able to take shots to the head and chest and still be standing. He's a man, not a god. One of the rare, true, new Mafia Definitive Edition gameplay features is its melee system, which I think I can summarize pretty well as a poor man's failed implementation of the free-flow combat system originally made famous by Batman Arkham Asylum back in, what, 2008, 2009? God, that game's old now, I can't believe it. Credit to the Arkham team for creating a melee system so universally beloved that it continues to be bastardized by other developers even now like 11 to 12 years after the fact. The melee combat will have you regularly alternating between two buttons, the Q key and the left alt key. Q being to attack and left alt reserved for dodging and countering. The animations for both are a bit janky at times and, and you really only use like one melee weapon in the whole game, the baseball bat. You're telling me that when the Mafia sends its goons to go teach the other side a lesson, the only melee weapon they're allowed to bring is a bat? Do they just have an endless supply of baseball bats, no tire irons, wrenches, or anything? Also, it's a little disappointing that there seems to be only two attack animations, a light attack and a heavy attack. You do have a decent variety of finishing moves, so it just begs the question of why light and heavy animations don't get the same degree of love. The whole melee system gives off this feeling of being rushed. Like, Hangar 13 meant to do a bit more with it, but maybe 2K had their foot on Hangar's throat in terms of getting this game out into the hands of players before Hangar was fully ready to do so. I mean, it wouldn't exactly be the first time, 
it's honestly surprising 2K would even let them delay the game once. Maybe 2K was worried history would repeat itself and players would bombard the game with negative press if this remake wasn't at least mostly everything it promised to be. Either way, you can avoid using the melee system and just shoot your way out of trouble. I recommend doing so. Sometimes the game will give you no choice but to use melee if the scene is specifically scripted to require melee use, but for the most part, you can't avoid a melee tussle by just shooting your way out of trouble before said trouble gets close enough to melee you. One frequent issue I saw crop up is that doesn't sound like a big deal but actually is in both scripted chase sequences and in combat sequences is the very awkward sprinting system. Whenever your character turns too sharply, they'll snap out of running and resume walking. Sometimes if your character was previously scripted to only walk, it can take several seconds of attempting to click or hold the shift button before they finally respond. Or sometimes the character will start running at your urging, but then immediately stop and go back to walking moments later without any reason whatsoever. It's insanely frustrating. Another technical issue I noticed is that the game is very prone at times to freezing up. I don't know why this is. Whenever I play my games, I have any background processes like antivirus automatically disabled from running scans. But just to be sure it wasn't something on my end, I did a quick check from Task Manager and confirmed the issue was within Mafia Definitive Edition itself. Likewise, I confirmed that my graphics card had the latest drivers installed, which it did. The freezes tended to be somewhat random in nature, sometimes occurring during high-intensity chase sequences, or sometimes when loading in and out of a cutscene, or sometimes whenever I was doing more casual stuff in the world itself. There was no real predictability. After doing some reading, I don't seem to be the only one experiencing these freezes, far from, so you might get them as well, or perhaps not. Either way, I figured it was uh, worth passing on the warning. Another problem I experienced during play is that if you die or otherwise have to restart or resume play, the loading times are just insane. I waited as long as about two minutes simply to restart a level because I went too far out of the radius while driving. I was supposed to be driving uh, to a specific area and I missed my destination and the game gave me an automatic game over for it. At this point, I was so used to the game giving me long game over sequences that I literally got up to go to the bathroom, washed my hands and come back and it was still loading and still <laughs> it still hadn't restarted and let me continue play yet. Now I'm running this game off of what is effectively still an almost $2,000 computer, so I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> In regards to the game's cover system, there is a secondary mechanic where in games such as The Division, the character can, at the press of a button, move forward and take cover behind another viable object. However, the game at no point makes this evident to the player, and you have to have your camera very specifically angled for the prompt to even appear on screen. And even when that's the case, the game doesn't always properly register your action when you press the required key. Enemy AI is fairly decent. Enemies will generally try to take cover, or if there is enough of them, split into two groups, with one group using pump shotguns and tommy guns to keep you pinned down while a few individual goons try to flank you on the sides. Of course, their detection radiuses and reaction times are still terrible. If you break down the door and they're inside, they'll take a second to process the fact that you're there before they react, giving you more than enough time to plug them both full of holes before they have time to blank. Now you can tell I've been playing this game for too long if my mind is already slipping to 1920s slang. I didn't plan that, I didn't script it, but whatever, I'm keeping it in. The cars in this game, well, they definitely feel authentic to the period, which from a narrative and immersion standpoint makes perfect sense, but it definitely will prove to be a detraction when you're stuck playing through one of the frequent car chase missions. It's a little frustrating when your car's stats indicate it's twice as fast and has twice as good handling as the enemy's car. But when you actually put it to the test, it's slipping and sliding on the roads like you're driving over the slickest and most widespread patch of ice in human history. I'm all for cars here being a little unreliable, but if you're going to put me in a timed chase sequence, or one where if the suspect gets away and you fail, give me a car that doesn't make me want to drive straight off the nearest bridge. Overall, I'm mildly impressed. For the most part, the game is fairly enjoyable, although definitely not the most remarkable Mafia title. I can't speak to the authenticity of the plot in terms of, of how faithfully it executes and improves on the original script, and where the two deviate, as I indicated earlier in the video. I've never played the original Mafia game, but I did play Mafia 2 and the clusterfuck that was the third and most recent sequential Mafia game. Mafia Definitive Edition was and is well worth the asking price of $29.99, but as ever, if you find it during a decent sale, any price drop would make it all the more appealing. On that note, that's where I'm going to wrap it up for today. As ever, if you want to support the work I do here on the channel, there are a number of ways that you can do so. You can hit the like button and tell me what you think of the game or the video itself down in the comment section below. I do respond to the overwhelming majority of comments whenever I can, 
So if you're trying to reach me or get my attention, the comment section is probably your best way of doing so. As of the time of this recording, the channel has over 860 subscribers. I'd like to end October with at least 900. So if you're still watching and you like what you've seen, consider subscribing and clicking the little bell icon to opt into getting notifications whenever I upload a new video. I only upload about once a week, sometimes twice, so don't worry about me spamming your notification feed. I promise that's not likely ever to happen in the foreseeable future. And with that said, I think my work here is done. This is Warrior Dan signing out. Stay awesome everybody, stay safe, and peace out.